everyone. 2nd of January, which means the transfer window is open. Or in Newcastle United's case, means it's the 2nd of January. Or the loan window is open, at best. I mean, this video probably will be about as pointless as a snooze button on a fire alarm. But hey, I'll do this video. I did one last January. Uh, tra top transfer targets for Newcastle. Linked from several sources online, from the Chronicle to Sky Sports to, to a bit of everything really. And the, the names that keep on springing up, the most likely transfers to Newcastle. I mean, we all know it'll probably be none or one or two on loan. But uh, I'll go through them. I mean, last January it was Giraffe Van Kennedy, the loan signs that really helped Newcastle stay up on it. Hopefully we'll have something similar this year. But not to hold my breath because uh, Steve Howie's countdown's ticking about the announcement about the takeover. We're still waiting to hear news of that, so Mike actually is in Disneyland, I think. Universal Studios, Florida. He can give a fuck. But, I'll let you know who apparently is coming to the tune in January. Top of Rafa Benitez's list is a playmaker. Someone who can do a better job than Ayose Perez in that number 10 role. And his number one choice in that playmaker number 10 role is Miguel Almiron. The 24-year-old Paraguay national from Atlanta United. Almiron has enjoyed another brilliant campaign, leading Atlanta to the MLS Cup. They won the league with them, racking up 13 goals and 15 assists. He's been linked with a move to the Premier League for the last year or so now, and it looks as if the president of Atlanta, Darren Eels, is ready to cash in. However, he's insisted that Almiron is not going for chump change. He's saying that he's going to cost around £23 million. Moving on then, eh? Because Mike actually wouldn't even invest £2.3 million. Pounds. We wouldn't even spend £2.3 million on Almiron. Never mind £23 million, I bet. Or £12.3 realistically. We wouldn't spend anywhere near the valuation of 23 anyways. So with them being linked with West Ham and Spurs as well, I very much doubt he's going to come to Newcastle. Next on the list, which is obviously crucial, is a left-back. Because, as Rafa has highlighted so many times, He's wanted one since he prefers came in Newcastle. But he has been chasing left back for years now. There's only one recognised left back on the books at Newcastle United, which is Paul Dummett. But he has highlighted it over and over again the issues. He's had to play Kieran Clark there, right back man Quio at left back. He's had to do it all. Uh, he's had to do a makeshift, he's done a brilliant job of it. But linked is Maxim Punje from Bordeaux, a cut price option from League One, not Sonnen's League. League One, LIG, UE, in the French League. Not much better standard of football, to be honest, especially in that level. And uh, in Pungy as well, he's only made 78 appearances since he's been at board when he's been there several years now. He's actually made the same amount of appearances playing for the reserves and on loan in Nimes as well, so it's it's not really a great option, to be fair. The link with them, the word link with Pungy, the, the Bordeaux fullback back in December 2016, widespread rumours then. We'll try to get him on a pre-contractual agreement so he would sign the summer 2017 for free. Shock. But that didn't go ahead. Saying his extension at Bordeaux hasn't really featured too much then. Another option at left-back is another young, cheap French option. This time a lot younger. And this time not as cheap, actually. But he's 19-year-old. He was linked in the summer. Stanley in Socky. Promising talent. Aggressive and attacking. Likes to burst up and down their wings. He's not getting enough chances at PSG, as you can imagine. Not many people do. With their squad depth and the money they've got. So he's linked with a move. And uh, Newcastle are back in there again. We were quoting £9 million in the summer. So it's no wonder we didn't sign him. Um, we'll get him over the line this time. I know Rafa is desperate for a left-back leg. So you'll want to bring someone in in January. Could be in on a loan with a look to a permanent. Or it could be another nobody. Like a, a Punji who's not really doing out. Midfield now. Where I would love to see this player signed. And Rafa would love him as well. He's a massive admirer of Ruben Loftus-Cheek. Young England international who's kicking on every time he gets a game for Chelsea. Whether it be in the Cup, the Europa League. He does brilliantly. He gets on the score sheet. But Chelsea obviously invested big money in uh, Jorginho in the summer. And already have masses of talent in the centre of the park there. So he can't really get a game. He's linked with another little move. Obviously, he was at Palace, wasn't he? Not so long ago. I would love to see him at the two. Absolutely love it. But uh, I can't see it happening. I mean, Benitez missed out, missed out on him two years ago and he's trying to bring Townsend back as well. You would need that domestic loan slot option. 
So it's probably not going to happen. Chelsea probably keep him because of the competitions. But then again, the kid needs game time. He needs to kick on. So we don't want to stifle these young, these talents where they're not getting matches to, to perform and progress as players. So I'd love to see him here, but probably won't happen. You're probably going elsewhere who are more likely to play. Pay his wages or maybe a more interesting prospect for him. But if you know Newcastle to get taken over a lot of sheet, I'd love to sign him. Like whether it be loan or permanent somewhere, you know, because if we showed ambition. If we just had the owner to back the fans and the club and the manager, then it would be absolutely fine. Loftus Cheek would say no bother, but at the minute, probably un too much uncertainty, just like there is with the, with the rest of the window. Another option that Benitez has clearly identified is a winger. Francis Camano is on that list. One man they've scouted is Camano from Bordeaux, another League One, French League One option. Guinea International has been a sublime form this season, scoring 10 goals and getting two assists. His contract is out in the summer, so it could be a discount shelf option for Mike Ashley and Newcastle. So I could see this one happening, and there is strong links for this one, to be fair. But let's just hope he's not crying out as another Robotan. Because, you know, we haven't had the best to look lately, how we were fresh, French exports. The other option as a winger is Ritsu Doan. We waited all this time for these Asian players to come to Newcastle, and now, now we're getting an influx of them. They're coming our. We've got Muto, we've got Ki Sung Young. And now we've been linked with Doan. Japan International playing his trade in the Eredivisie, the Dutch League for Groningen. 20 years old, he's been scouted recently. Newcastle have had a look at him, went over on the DFDS Ferry, had a quick look at him. Um, it's just one of them saying that doesn't really get you excited, is it really? I mean, if he comes, obviously, we'll get behind the lad, but it screams of like Moto where it's just getting a number in for the sake of it, really, isn't it? Um, you wouldn't really think he'd set set a delay, but he's a young lad. You never know. Can't be much much worse than what we've got, really. But then again, you know, I've got Jacob Murphy sitting there, another young lad, another young winger. He's probably just a, a fucking Japanese version of him. So just give Murphy a chance. If we're going to sign a winger, it needs to be someone who's going to come in and kick on straight away. We would know they've got the Premier League capability to do so, but obviously under our current budget, that's pretty much not possible. Moving on to strikers now. Something that Newcastle desperately need. I feel in January, obviously Rondon's doing a great job. I would love to see a little man run off him, not a dwarf, an actual little striker, kind of a Robbie Keane, Jermaine Defoe, Mike alone type striker. Get him behind the lanes, get Rondon's flicks on, or someone like an arm run in the number 10 would, would, would suffice, would be would be a good saying. But in a striker role there, who are Newcastle link with to sign to go up top with Rondon or compete for places, considering we've only got Hostel on the bench and that is it. Tammy Abraham, his name's popping up again. It always does in Newcastle. He turned me down a couple of years ago. He went to Swansea for family reasons. And he had, obviously, Clement there, who, used to, who was the manager at the time of Swansea, who used to work with Chelsea and you. And it kind of made sense. The whole talk about not coming to Newcastle so he wouldn't get distracted by the party night life scene as well. <laughs> We've seen it happen with the likes of Nile Ranger, Kieran Dyer, and that. So maybe that was the case. Abraham's done very well since he's been on loan at Aston Villa. He scored 14 goals in four months and he has asked to cancel his loan spell at Villa because there is Premier League clubs sniffing around him, asking him for a chance. So he wants to go there for the second half of the season, test himself in the Premier League. Abraham might be a decent signing. Uh, sharp, pacey striker. Still doesn't look too comfortable in front of goals. So when I watch him, I remember he did score three or four the other week in that 5-5 uh, five, five game Villa had with Forest, I think it was. But... Uh, I mean, he still he doesn't look the most professional when he's in front of goal. There's something about him where it's like a, a shola esque It's kind of it's like bobbing about. It, it goes in. There's no real skill there <laughs> in a sense. But he has got a good goal scoring record. So you'd, you'd probably take him. Another young English striker, Dominic Solanke. Again, not getting enough opportunities at Liverpool. Again, doing very well when he's called upon and does very well for England. Uh, Rafa is an admirer of him as well. He's made that known that he's a fan of Solanke. Rafa's type of striker as well, re really. And he, and he does look more comfortable in front of goal. More of a natural goal scorer, Solanke. And he put himself about, he's got a good head on him as well. Um, however, he's poised to join Crystal Palace, apparently. Our, our name's still getting bounded about with him. Newcastle's still linked with him, but it is looking like he's probably going to join Crystal Palace, which will be a blow relegation rival in a sense that they're floating around mid-table like us they could definitely and have been sucked into it so they're saying him he'll more than likely kick on get them a few points this one Fabio Barini 
All right, link everywhere. This one made BBC Sports, Sky Sports, Fabio Barini. Linked with Newcastle United. ex Macam, obviously, Fabio Barini scored in the derby. Has been linked with the move to Newcastle because he's not getting a chance at AC Milan and he's ready for a move elsewhere. They've offered his services to other clubs. What the fuck's going on here? Yeah? We're going to turn into Sunderland's 2014 team in a minute. We've already got Manquillo, Yedlin, Key. We did have callback. Now Barini. What's next? Fucking Adam Johnson. I didn't want Barini. I didn't want any. I didn't want Adam Johnson either. The little nonce when he gets out of prison. But no, I, I'm not having Barini. Like, no good. He turned up every one ten games for Sunderland. Obviously, one of them was against us. I just can't see any sense in that at all. And thankfully, it's just popped up there. I wrote this last night. And it's just popped up. I had a quick look again before, and apparently he's linked with a uh, with a move to Chinese agents in Hong Kong, trying to push a move, push a move there. So that would. Probably more makes sense. Brini in the back of the Premier League in black and white instead of red and white. No, thank you. This one is really gathering momentum, and this one is absolutely ever. If you typed into Google, Kmar Roof, you don't even need to put in Newcastle, it comes up. Kmar Roof from Leeds United. Newcastle scouted him for years, you know. We scouted him when we were in the Championship for Oxford. He then signed from Oxford for three million to Leeds after he helped Oxford get promoted, scoring 18 goals for them in one season. November 2015, where Roof was asked about Newcastle's interest because he knew there was a few scouts at every game and he said he was flattered by it. 13 goals for Leeds this season. And it's Leeds have a history of selling their best players uh, within the Championship. You look at Chris Wood, who went to Burnley for £15 million. So it would be surprising if Leeds let him go in the sense that he's obviously fired in the goals to get them top of the Championship this season. But Leeds actually do need money. They are a bit cash-strapped. However, selling him could really hiccup their promotion charge. So it is gathering momentum. It's widespread claims. Whether it happens or not, though, remain to be seen. Let us know what you think of that list. Give us a shout if I've missed anyone. But that was that was a quick collection of several names there. When you have a you know a good scout last night, two three hours I spent having a look around on, on different sources, different websites. What I came up with there for those positions. Rafa has made it clear that he wants three or four faces in a playmaker. A left back and a winger are the priorities. Otherwise, he also is interested in a centre mid and a centre forward. You'll be lucky to get one or two of them, won't you? I think we will probably get someone going forward, like an Almiron. But if we know, like we think, Ashley's not going to sell, we won't pay the money for Almiron. And a left back, I could see we're getting Bungie, I could see we're getting a cheap option like that. And it's just going to scream of a high door, isn't it? Really, it's not going to. Get you excited, it's not really going to be a top class player that you want to kick on. And going forward, I don't know, we'll probably get someone on loan. Who you would like to see brought in, but realistically who you think will come in. And enjoy yourself.